Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Um, I don't know why I say that, because if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. If not, not. But, you know, it does help the algorithm. Actually, I heard somebody say that not subscribing helps commenting and liking. Hell, dislike. I don't care what you do. I'm not your mom. So, whatever. Don't subscribe. In fact, if you're subscribed, go unsubscribe. And then in another video, I'll tell you to resubscribe. We've, we've got authoritarian government. You don't need authoritarian D-list YouTubers telling you what to do with your subscribe button and your time. Okay, um, today, short video. It's on some EDC gear, some stuff that I carry. None of these products, I think, warrant an entire review. So I'm gonna talk about the stuff that I carry every single day um, and go from there. So starting off, knives. Um, I know that there's a lot of different knives out there. I don't wanna get in an argument with knives like gun people. So I I'm getting my pilot's license. I, I bought part of an airplane, like it's a whole airplane. I didn't buy like a tire, but I bought like a part portion of it. Um, between gun people, knife people, and airplane people, we all argue about the dumbest shit, okay? Like, you know, oh no, this is better, oh that's better. Like, dude, you do you and go from there. So, yeah, I'm stepping into it with knife stuff, but yeah, EDC pocket knife. Um, I've been carrying for a little over a year now the Sandrin knives, it's an Italian company, the Torino pocket knife. Um, go on the website. All the specs are there. Discla disclaimer, disclaimer, I work for Sandrin Knives, so I, I do work for them, um, help them with, with marketing and whatnot. Uh, and Cabot Guns is the importer, so that's how that is all put together. So I got this knife for free because um, it needed to be taken photos of. It was actually the prototype. I've had it for a little over a year. The blade is not steel. It is, it's tungsten carbide, like the stuff you see in rings, all that stuff, but it's a special, polyhedral tungsten carbide cobalt matrix science blah 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 that makes it very very hard so it's like 71 72 on the rockwell scale which measures hardness but not brittle so that means it keeps its edge unbelievably long but it's not going to shatter like a tungsten carbide ring so the guy alessandro in italy funniest dude um but it, he he's been making blades not just knife blades but he's been making like you know industrial cutting blades that cut like Tyson chicken. Okay, so they gotta cut their chickens, pigs, all that stuff, and they can't splinter off. There's all kinds of food safety regulations. So he's been making blades there. He said, you know what, let's make a knife blade. So a couple years ago, he got together with Rob, the owner of, of Cabot, and they started marketing some fixed blades. Long story short, now there is a folder. And so this Torino has been in my pocket for over a year now. It is still, I'm trying to see if there's anything to, to, to cut here. I don't know, here's a piece of plastic. Oh yeah, look at that. It went right through the plastic. I barely any effort. If I had paper, I'd slice it. But this this knife I've had for over a year now, it was the prototype for photos and it is still super sharp. I carry it every day. It's got these uh, G10 scales, uh, titanium pocket clip that is reversible. Um, and it uses a re really cool recoil lock to where it's really locked in place, but it's super simple to, to disengage. You just push down and the finger choil Put your finger in there. So this is a lightweight, not you know light duty, but like don't go cutting staples and like wire and stuff with that because that's not what you're supposed to use pocket knives for. You got wire cutters. Um, but for my everyday cutting, opening boxes, you know, cutting stuff that needs to be cut, this knife has been fantastic. The only thing that happened is it went through the wash. Um, it didn't rust because it's not steel. It's car. It's tungsten carbide. Uh, some aluminum bits and then a titanium pocket clip. One of the screws came out. So I've got some new screws coming, um, but one of the screws came out when it went into the wash, but the knife still functions just perfectly. You can flip that pocket uh, clip around, but they've got extra screws that hold the whole thing together. So if one of them came out, I ended up being okay. So fantastic everyday carry. It is 199 bucks, okay? Which for a pocket knife, I don't know, it seems to be a very reasonable price considering that I haven't had to have it sharpened for a year. It's still, I mean, damn near factory sharp after having it for a year. So not having to have it sharpened and it just continuing to go, I'd say 199 bucks is very, very worth it. So pocket knife there. EDC number two, let's talk belts. Uh, this is from Lead Devil USA. It is their EDC belt. It is, I believe it's a one and a half inch 
belt, or maybe, yeah, it's a one and a half inch belt, um, which means it's gonna fit most pants, except for, I don't know, maybe your stuffy dockers or something like that. But this works very, very well. It's got um, extra, extra tight woven, whatever this stuff is here, um, so that when you put your, your gun inside your belt, a carrying, carrying appendix, you have some extra bite and the belt doesn't flex. So when you are pulling your gun out, the holster stays, the holster doesn't come out as long as you got a good holster. So these lead devil belts, um, I got this from Safe Haven Dynamics. I, these are really good guys. Go to their website if you want one. Um, they're dealers for Lead Devil. So I've had this belt for over a year and this is my go-to EDC belt. Just Velcro, loops through, nice big buckle. Boom, we're good there. Next, EDC. I carry a 2011 on most days, um, which is a double stack 1911. This happens to be a full-size Triarch with a Surefire X300. Um, carrying a 2011 appendix can be difficult, but the Tenacor Magus Soul, Soul for Sun or Light, I suppose, this is my favorite uh, holster for carrying 2011s. Um, normally, when you're looking at a holster, uh, especially with a light, you should be looking for retention around the X300. Uh, and this is exactly the case on this holster here. It does use the X300 for retention. It's very positive, but not too tough uh, because 2011s have a lot of different slide top profiles. This is a tri-top. If you go to um, Alchemy, Alchemy is a full round top. If you go to uh, Staccato, I think they're currently a flat top. So that, that slide top profile means that you can't use the pressure on the top of the slide for your retention on all 2011s. So having the X300 means that this works fine for Alchemy, it works fine for Staccato, it works fine for Triarch. So I'm assuming it worked fine for your Atlas or whatever. I've gone through a lot of different appendix holsters. This is what I use every day. And with either a Triarch or an Alchemy, the only reason I'm not carrying the Alchemy is it's out for photos and all that stuff. So I don't have it currently with me, but yeah. The Tenacore Magasol, those run, hang on, pricing wise, 109 bucks. All right, so my EDC setup so far is 200 bucks, 109 minus the gun, so we're talking 300. I don't remember what this was. It was definitely under 100 bucks for a belt. Uh, next thing that I found, okay, is sunglasses. I gotta talk about this. Um, I just found these, so I'm getting my pilot's license and I needed glasses that are non-polarized so that when I tilt my head or I'm looking out the window, I can still see the GPS and the iPad, it doesn't go black. And so many sunglasses are polarized, so I couldn't wear anything. And I, I've been watching YouTube videos of pilots and they talked about these flying eyes, which are made here in Texas. And what I like about them is a lot of the stuff that you need for flying, you also need for shooting. So they are tapered to really fit nicely up against your head so they don't stick out. They've got different size of frames and you know measurements and whatnot. I forgot which ones these are, but you can go to their website and look. Oh, it's the Osprey, it's right there. So I got the Ospreys and they fit up real nice on your head. They're super lightweight. The lenses are clear. They're UVA, UVB rated, but non-polarized. So like on my phone, I can turn my phone and still see the screen. I can see the screens while I'm flying, all that stuff. But also what makes these nice is when I've got ear pro on. So normally I use in-ear, because especially shooting rifle, but if I have you know over ear pro, these still make a nice seal. So the, the, the seal isn't broken by my glasses and they don't push against my temple, don't give me a headache. So flying eyes, 200 bucks uh, for these sunglasses, but they are fantastic. And they say designed and assembled in Austin. So obviously they're made somewhere else, but they put the arms on in Austin, Texas. But yeah, flyingeyes.com, talk to them. Those are great glasses. And the last piece of EDC gear that I am just, <coughs> you know, super in love with, and I've had it for uh, going on a year and a half now, is the Garmin Instinct watch, okay? So this Instinct, um, I had an Apple Watch before and I hated it because the battery wore, would run out. This is the standard Instinct, not the tactical, not the solar. It's like 207 bucks on Amazon. 
the Garmin Instinct watch. It does everything you need, time, date, the battery. If I'm not, you know, running marathons and using the GPS, which is, is rare if ever, um, the battery lasts over a week. So Garmin Instinct, fantastic EDC. So if you're looking for like specific gear, um, it's it's great. So this is, this is the stuff. Tenacore, Lead Devil, Sandrin, Flying Eyes, Garmin. Check it out.